Happy Sunday evening, everybody. Meteorologist Hunter Forrest here. Welcome to this special edition of Hurricane Hub Live. Normally it happens Monday through Friday at 8 o'clock in the evening, but we have some things we want to talk about. So we came on yesterday to talk about Invest 97L, and this evening that's exactly what we are going to talk about. Two areas out there in the, the, in the Atlantic that we're tracking right now, but one that we are really paying close attention to. That is that area in red. The area in yellow, not much to worry about with this one. That's Invest 96L. Those chances of development have gone down and down and down day after day. That's the good news. And if it does develop into something, it's out of here. It's going to move off into the northern Atlantic. Not much to worry about, but it's this area here off the coast of Africa. A tropical wave came off the coast the other day and now has a 90% chance of developing within the next couple of days, 60% within the next two days. So likely we'll see our next tropical depression within the next day or so and tropical storm Aaron maybe within the next two days. So certainly quickly we'll see this area developing. So let's take a look now at the timing. So time is on our side with this system if it does develop into something, you know, rather significant. And right now it's all the way near Africa. So it, if it was to impact the United States, that's about, you know, 10 to 12 days away. So time is on our side. But as we take a look at the models, starting to show, you know, more of a northeast and then a northwest curve, but still plenty of time to monitor this system. That's Invest 96L out there right now in the middle of the Atlantic. A little bit of a spin over there. And then we have this area of kind of disorganized thunderstorms trying to get its act together. But I mean, it is really trying the National Hurricane Center again saying 90 percent chance that this is going to develop. So a high, high possibility we will see our next tropical depression and then our next name system. So bringing some thunderstorms to Cape Verde Islands. It's just off the coast of Senegal, continuing to push westward. Let's take a look, though, at its environment. Of course, it has plenty of warm water. Temperatures this time of year in the ocean are in the 80s, mid 80s in a few areas, even upper 80s. So that's why you see more development this time of year. The peak of the season is in September because that's when the waters are really the warmest. You kind of have less wind shear as well, less Saharan dust. So that's why you start to see more areas kind of popping off in August and especially September because of uh, the situation that's kind of going on in the atmosphere. It's more conducive for development. So we have warm water here in the main development region and really warm water areas off towards the west closer to the United States. So between Bermuda and the Caribbean, we have temperatures, you know, in the mid to even upper 80s in a few areas closer to the Bahamas. And as we take a look at the wind shear, you know, there's a little bit where that area is right now. But if it stays a little bit, you know, more north of that wind shear, that'll help it you know, stay and get more organized. If it was, if the wind shear, you know, was, you know, engulfing this entire area, it would kind of help tear the system apart. You know, you, when you have wind shear, it acts to squash any development. So there'll be a little bit, you know, as this progressive to, as this progresses towards the west, but not a whole bunch where it's going to tear it apart and not allow it to develop. A lot of the models are saying it's going to develop and it's going to develop over the next couple of days. Here's a look at the spaghetti models. A lot of them in good agreement that it's going to progress westward over the next couple of days. This is Thursday. So this is still the uh, by the end of the week. It's still, you know, in the middle of the ocean. So that's why time is on our side. You know, it's not like it's going to move across the entire ocean in a day. It takes a long, long while. You know, the ocean is very vast. So that's the good thing about this system and when the systems develop in the main development region, the MDR, we have plenty of time to watch. So that's Thursday. And then by the time we get into Saturday and Sunday, you'll notice a little bit of a curve. So the difference between, you know, the spaghetti plot yesterday and today is that they were a little bit more west yesterday with a little bit of a curve, but today, the trends are a little bit more towards the north and the west, and some of them even more towards the north and the east once you go a little bit further out, you know, into Monday and Tuesday, but still some keeping it down towards the south to the north of Puerto Rico. But it really all depends on where that 
uh, center ends up? You know, is it going to be further off towards the uh, east or towards the west? All of that depends on this area of high pressure that's sitting in the Atlantic. But let's take a look right now at the American versus European model. This is Friday. So this is, you know, a couple days away by the end of the upcoming work week. They are in great agreement on where it will be, you know, by next Friday. So that's good. That gives you higher confidence on placement for this storm. But then by the time, you, you know, you get into Saturday and then this is Sunday, it really starts to explode. You'll notice that. So likely seeing a hurricane by this time next weekend, somewhere likely between Bermuda and the Caribbean, which is similar to what we were saying yesterday. Um, but this is where they kind of deter a little bit. The American model wants to take it off away from Bermuda. This is just one model run, by the way. You can't just go off of one model run. You have to look at trends, but the trends are saying definitely a more of a northeast turn. So some model runs are going to take it, you know, that way one model run and then a little bit more this way the other. So again, you just have to look at the trends and they are saying that we'll see more of a north um, west turn and then maybe a northeast turn. But it depends on, you know, this high pressure system in the Atlantic. How strong is it going to be? The stronger it is, it's going to push this system further down towards the south. And that could allow it to get closer to the United States. If it's weaker, then that would allow it to, you know, maybe get closer to Bermuda and stay really far out and then, you know, off into um, the middle of the ocean. But again, it depends on the strength of this high. But these are the likely scenarios kind of a week from today. Next Sunday, we could have a system somewhere in this area. How strong? Likely a hurricane. You know, Cat 2, maybe could you have a ma major hurricane? Not out of the question. Um, but right now, the million dollar question is where is it going to go once it gets into this location? And again, when you look at history, this is really what you should expect. So pretty much anywhere from Maine, so through New England, down the East Coast, has to continue monitoring this over the next week or so. You have to check back in each and every day, kind of see what the updates are like. But now the models are, again, trending a little bit more of this turn towards the north um, west and then the northeast. So hopefully the best case scenario would it, it would just follow this arrow, go right around high pressure system and move on out of here. But if it stays further to the south, the high pressure system's a little bit stronger. It takes that turn a little bit later and gets closer to the East Coast and, you know, could get close to New England as well. That's what some models are saying. Some are saying it'll turn a little bit sooner, some a little bit later. But again, this is still way far out. So no model knows exactly what's going to happen. But likely, as we get closer to this point in time, you get a better idea of what's actually going to happen. But luckily, that's still about a week away. Um, but as we take a look here at the sustained winds forecast, Right now, winds are at about 35 miles per hour for this invest. And when it becomes a depression, it'll be uh, right around there as well. But over the next couple of days, you'll notice those wind speeds increasing. So about two days out, we could see our tropical storm air informing. Could it be before then? Certainly. Could it be a little bit after? Sure. But, you know, about, you know, a day to two days out, we'll start to see tropical storm air informing. But some of these models saying by, you know, six, seven days out, uh, we could see, you know, a cat two, maybe a cat three hurricane. So could we see not only our first hurricane of the season, but uh, it'll be our first major hurricane? Sure. That's certainly not out of the question. Some models are saying that is a possibility. But right now, you know, certainly could be seeing a hurricane between Bermuda and the Caribbean this time next week. Uh, next name on the list would be Aaron. We've had Andrea, Barry, Chantel, and Dexter. No hurricanes yet, just all tropical storms. Again, the next name on the list would be Aaron, which we will likely see over the next coming days. After that, we have Fernand. So always just something to monitor over the next couple of days. You're going to want to have to check back in here probably each and every day. 
just to stay updated on where the system is going. Um, if you have any vacation plans in the Caribbean, uh, Bermuda, of course, has to pay attention to this and pretty much everyone along the East Coast. Uh, but we're gonna end it here on a good note. Um, HHL, HHL trivia, Hurricane Hub Live trivia. Yesterday, we talked about what was the longest traveled hurricane on record. Was it Hurricane Alberto in 1994? Hurricane Connie in 1995, Hurricane John in 1994, or Hurricane Barrel, which just happened just last year, one of the earliest major hurricanes or Cat 5 hurricanes, 2024. Which one do you think it was? It was Hurricane John back in 1994. Now this was in the Pacific Ocean. John traveled over 8,000 miles. 8,000 miles, that is a far tracked Hurricane, you're gonna to have to look up the path because the way it just traveled across the Pacific is intense. And one of the cool things about it is that it actually traveled over the international dateline. So it was Hurricane John, and then it traveled over the international dateline and became Typhoon John. And then it went back over the international dateline again and transitioned back to Hurricane John. So just a cool, situation with this hurricane, one of those that you have to look up and read up on because it is definitely uh, uh, one of the cooler hurricanes that have uh, been out there, 8,000 miles. But that's it for us tonight. I appreciate you joining me. You could always scan the QR code to download the 13 News Now Hurricane Guide. It has information on supplies you should have on hand. Emergency numbers you might need and a lot more. I appreciate you joining me today. Tim will be back for Hurricane Hub Live tomorrow at 8 o'clock and for the rest of the week. But again, I appreciate you joining me and have a great rest of your night.